Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. This is PJ. Today we are going to talk about this twist pattern on the ring shank and also how to create a halo calculated stone for it. Are you ready? Let's get started. There will be two different parts of this video. One is the top. I want to show you how to arrange the stone for this halo shape. Uh, and also the second part will be how to making this twisted ring band as starting from the scratch first we are going to bring in the stone and then you can download the stone at the description below sign up the newsletter and i will have a stone link sent it to you and then we are also um, going to start it with the ring size in this case i want my ring size to be eight which is the diameter to be 16. and i'm going to move this stone to the position that I want. One thing I wanted to mention is the coolant of the stone, which is this point right here. You don't want it to have it too close to the ring. If you set it up really close to the ring and your jeweler may set it lower and that might cause the problem uh, is stick it to the bottom of the ring shank. So I usually like to have at least 0.5 millimeter over there okay and then once we have the stone we wanted to make a bezel set and so let's go ahead to draw a rectangle and i wanted to go something look like this this will be the bezel and i wanted to cut it no more than 25 percent usually i will do about 20 percent of the stone you can make it tilted if you want to all right i intentionally make it a little bit taller it's because you need the jeweler need to push this wall against the stone for setting right how tall we need to have you can have like really tall like this uh, which will have no problem but waste a lot of material so over the table will be fine so that will be first so let's go ahead to do the surface by using the revolve we're gonna pick up this one snapping into the zero holding the shift like this and click on the screen and then you will get 360 degree and then you will get the bezel. It look a little bit too tall, but that's fine. This is for the stone setting. The one that I have, uh, this one is more like a for rendering purpose, but in this case, there's no way that you can set a stone with not enough metal. So we want to make sure it's a little bit taller for the stone setting purpose. If you have a history recorded, sometimes you can do is you can make it a bit elegant by tilting it a little bit and then move it in the same. You don't want to cut it more than 25% of your prong. And this will be the tilted wall. And sometimes it looks more elegant that you can tuck in your head or uh, stone underneath it. All right, so once we have that piece, I'm going to make a copy of this one and then uh, just simply scale it down 3d scale it down to the proper size that you like and again i want to tuck in this and i also want to tilt it a little bit so it's facing upward but tilt it a little bit make sure that your stone is not cutting into the wall and so i'm going to move it out just a little bit something look like this all right, so we need another place for this piece to sit in. So we are going to come into the front view. I'm going to draw another rectangle for this to sit in, and I want it to be long enough to make sure that it pass the bottom of the ring shank, right? And I also want to tilt it this one, the same angle with my stone, and kind of moving in a little bit. All right, so you do want it to have a stone where the girdle is flush with the surface that you have uh, you wanted to have it to sit so I will adjust something look like this okay so now once you have it double check on the top and see if it's everything look all right if it does let's give it a try and again you want to record a history on the bottom and let's go to the surface and then you got revolve and then you want to snapping to the zero holding your shift and then we want to do 360 degree and then we'll get another surface like this now when you have this surface i think i need to adjust even a little bit more to make it look flush right there all right so when you have this surface i usually like to do is having the rim right here 
all the edge right here to be rounded so I want, I'm going to use the fillet edges first and I want to fill it for something really small like 0.3 millimeter here and just have a nice rim over there maybe that is too much let's change it to the 0.15 we just need to have a little bit rim there so it doesn't look too sharp over there you'll break the history but that's okay we're not changing anymore all right so that's one piece right there let's go ahead to give it a try for arrange the stone with the polar array command we want the snapping into the zero and i'm going to try 16 of them and see how's the arrangement um, let's do 360 degree as you can see that now it's like jamming back to each other so i would like to do is to change into 15 and then it is a, a bit better i'm also going to change into the 14 and see how it goes and it looked much better it basically wanted to gap in between here it's about 0.1 to 0.2 millimeter and that's hit enter so we have got 14 arrangement right there uh, in this case i like to go with the even number so I will have one here and one here it look more symmetrical and those two are aligned so let's go back to the perspective double check it look all right if it does look all right let's go ahead to creating a little prong i'm going to create this very tiny um, polyline right there and then we're going to use the pipe command and i'm going to pipe it roughly about this size and we can adjust the size if it doesn't work so first of all that's moving in here this one ideally it's going to be somewhere there and we are going to visible to see if this prong will fit it looks like a prong is too big so i'm going to 3d scale it down because you don't want people just looking at the prong you want them to look at the stone and that's put it here and double make sure that looks all right and if that looks all right to you we wanted to have another one put it right there this one because it's in inside so this can be a little bit smaller once we have the prong size that you like i'm going to have this one coming over close to the edge right here and also making a copy of the other one and um, we're going to size it down a little bit instead of moving there i actually want to pick up both of them and i'm going to use the rotate tool instead and snapping into the zero and kind of moving in this way if you want it to be particular you can you know using 360 degree divided by the 14 and then you can find a gap there all right so i want this one going up a little bit so i have enough prong to push over and this prong when they wanted to move it in a little bit it might be too much all right so double make sure they look all right i'm going to moving in a little bit make sure it's covered on both sides of the stone for something like this all right i also want to make sure this prong is not touching that wall and that's great that we have it tilted so it have a more space right there okay so if that look okay to you we are going to pick up those two prong and we are going to use the same command for polar array that's snapping into the zero and we do the same number for 14 of them and for 360 degree so then we'll have the prong ready right there okay so now everything is ready all we need to do is pick up our ring shank and i want to make it into the solid by extruded planar curve straight and then i want to make sure both are equal yes the solid equal yes on the top and then we'll get something like this now let's go ahead to pick up this bezel and this bezel and that's pulling different from here so then we have the top part it's done and then you also have a space open there sometimes to save the money on your metal you might want to cut it off this much right here so that will save you a lot of the metal weight here so you can make it the bottom uh, more open all right uh, i will leave that to you and uh, show you how to make the ring shank 
In the ring shank wise, I would like to having a ring shank go into the angle more like this way. So it's like coming taper from the bottom, going to the top, ending somewhere over there. Uh, you can adjust this line if you want to go in more or less. All right, so I'm going to stay something like that. We need to have a circle. That circle is um, following this uh, tilted angle there. So the command we are going to use is curve front to view. And with curve front to view, I'm going to pick up this one and this one. It will automatically creating this curve right there. And this is the curve it's going to follow uh, this tilted line. With this curve right there, I need to create in the pattern. So let's see how long is it by using the command for length. And with the length command, it's showing me that it is 50.555. So I'm going to copy that number and I'm going to draw a straight line with the polyline. And that's starting anyway right here and copy that 50.555 there. And then this is the length of this red line if it is being straightened and something over here. Okay, so then I'm going to come in over here to my um, right view to work on it. But it's hard to see where this line is on my right view. So I simply just going to uh, put the point right there. Okay, so that's coming to the right view. You see that point over there and that's the beginning of the line. We're going to create in the pattern by draw a circle and the circle roughly going to look like this and I'm going to move it somewhere about this place. Now, once I have this circle, I'm going to using that point as a center and we're going to use the polar array command and using the circle snapping to the point as a center and I want three of them. You can have more if you want to, it's just coming into the different pattern. Once you have that, let's go ahead to pick up all of them and using the trim command. And then we want to trim everything in the middle. So like this one, this one, this one, we want to get rid of them. And I'm also going to join them as well. So now we have the circle over there. Uh, you also want to measure if this is the length you want. So far I have it here. It's 1.78, which is fine because after you rotate it, they might get a bit fatter. But I don't like to have a sharp corner here. So I'm going to give it a fitted edges. As coming into the curve tool, you have the fitted corners, not fitted edges for fitted edges for the solid. So fitted corners, I want to pick up here. And uh, I want to fit the edge maybe just like 0.1. And to give it like really nice and soft edges, uh, soft corner there. And let's take a look on this. All right, so I'm going to have this one just align with my point because I was drawing on the construction plan. So we want to use the align tool on the right and make sure everything is aligned over there. Okay, so now we have this right here. I'm going to make it into the solid by having this one extruded planar curve straight. And we don't need the both side here. We just need one side. We want to go all the way snapping into that end right there. Okay. So how are we going to make it twist? Uh, we're going to use the twist command and let's go ahead to pick up this piece and coming into the twist command. And we wanted to snapping into the end point of that curve and also end point of the other end. And then we want to do 10 term. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You actually need to physically to rotate it 10 term there. And once you're done, you will get something like this. Notice that this is two end is a bit loose right there. Uh, it's because in the setting, we have an infinity setting now as a preset, but that's okay because that piece is going to be inside. We're going to cut it. Now, one thing really important, we need to know where's the seam of this curve. So we can come in over here and then we can pick up the seam and you will show the seam is right there. I want to seam is going to the middle top uh, of that circle. So this two end will end the inside of the handle there. Okay, so let's go ahead to flow. 
Another thing is currently we have this reference curve right in the middle. I wanted to move it down to the bottom. Uh, sometimes you can do is you can pick up both of the shape and we just using a line to the bottom right there. Uh, so that way it won't cut it inside of the ring shank. All right, so now let's give it a try. We want to use the command under the transform that you have flow along curve and you're going to pick up this piece first hit enter pick up the curve that you have and then we're gonna pick up the target curve all right so now you can see this is coming into correct position make sure it's not cutting inside of a ring shank and if that look okay to you you can come in into the right view and then we're gonna use the mirror command snapping into the zero and then you want to copy to the other side and then that will be the ring that you have as a split twisting ring with the head of setting. If you like the way I model, check out the membership program. I have a lot more tips and tricks wanted to share with you. Hope to see you in the membership. Thank you for watching and I will see you next.